Good morning, church family. Pastor Brett here, and to visitors, welcome to our devotional channel here at Rockhampton Baptist. One of the things we have learnt this year is how quickly things can change. Imagine where you were in February this year, what you were thinking, what you were planning for in regard to the year ahead. And in March, everything changed. The whole world shut down. No holidays, no travel, no birthday celebrations with family. Lost jobs, wedding plans changed or cancelled. All of a sudden, around the world, everything is in lockdown. How quickly things can change. One moment everything is going well, the next it all falls apart. One moment we're discouraged, broken, frustrated by life, the next all pieces come together. It can happen both ways. We see a lot of that in life where we're going through a situation that seems unending, we turn a corner and it all changes. Sometimes for the better, sometimes for the worse. One of the illustrations of this comes out of a story in Acts chapter 12. I'd like to read two sections of Acts as I speak a little bit in between. Acts chapter 12 starts with the story of Herod. About that time, King Herod Agrippa began to persecute some believers in the church. He had the apostle James, John's brother, killed with a sword. When Herod saw how much this pleased the Jewish people, he also arrested Peter. This took place during the Passover celebration. Then he imprisoned him, placing him under guard of four squads of four soldiers each. Herod intended to bring Peter out for public trial after the Passover. But while Peter was in prison, the church prayed very earnestly for him. Herod seemed so strong, so invincible, having murdered one of the top three apostles, seemed unstoppable in his rule. The church was genuinely and understandably afraid for its safety, moving themselves into a period of earnest prayer over the situation. But then it would seem suddenly at the end of the very same chapter of Acts 12, we read this. Now Herod was very angry with the people of Tyre and Sidon, so they delegate, sent a delegation to make peace with him because their cities were dependent upon Herod's country for food. The delegates won the support of Blastus Herod's personal assistant and appointed with Herod was granted. When that day arrived, Herod put on his royal robes, sat on his throne and made a speech to them. The people gave him great ovation, shouting, This is the voice of a god not a man. Instantly, an angel of the Lord struck Herod with sickness because he accepted the people's worship instead of giving glory to God. So he was consumed with worms and died. One moment, Herod was a force to be reckoned with, frightening for the church, invincible and almost godlike. The next, eaten by worms. Now, we don't know the time span here, but I believe there's a strong reason why Luke put these two stories so closely together. Because he wanted to communicate to us that under God, it doesn't matter how invincible a person might seem, anything can change and it can change quickly. There are times in life when we give in to worry. We are afraid. We are distressed by the circumstances around us. This happens a lot when we look at the state of the world. We worry about the world, where it's heading, what kind of environment there will be for our children. And worry can easily lead to despair. And despair can lead to the situation where we believe nothing will change. But you don't know what's just around the corner. What used to be a threat now has gone, a distant memory. What seemed 
hard now will one day be looked back upon as an important lesson that needed to be learned in life. And we know especially this is true with God. The tide turns so quickly when he is in charge. It is such dysfunctional thinking for us to believe that because we are in a situation now that it will never end, that it will always be like that, forever true. One mistake doesn't mean that you are a failure forever. One rejection does not mean that you are an undesirable person. One murder in the neighbourhood does not mean that your family will be forever unsafe. We do not know what is just around the corner, what God has in store for those who trust him. The church prayed about Herod. And in the end, Herod became nothing while the church continued to grow and expand. So I want to encourage you today, don't look too deeply into the situation. Just pray to God about it. Ask him to intervene into it. And don't let your mind be tricked into believing that it will always be forever the same. With God, anything can change and it can change very quickly. Let's pray. Heavenly Lord, I thank you so much that you are actually on the throne in charge of all things. Though to us at times who do not see the big picture don't always believe that or find it hard to believe, it doesn't change the fact. So Lord, we bring to you today the things that distress us the most, the things that cause us worry, knowing that probably in time we will look back on most of those things and they won't be as intense in time. But Lord, right now we bring them to you. We ask you to take charge of the situation in our world, the situation with our relationships, our finances, our security, our health. We give it all to you. Lord, we worry about such things, but we know anything can change in just a moment and we trust you in that. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, keep walking with God. Keep talking to him. Make sure you listen to him as you read the Bible. And when he does speak, trust and obey. Look for opportunities to bless others. And we'll see you soon.